Hello everyone! In today's video, I finish up installing all of the new suspension and drivetrain components I'm using on the Firebird, and I also complete this roof rack I'm using for the K10 Pre-Runner build. Last week, I was able to make a lot of progress on the Firebird drift build. I'm currently in the process of doing a complete overhaul of all the suspension and drivetrain components, using this opportunity to install revised and upgraded versions of the parts that I had previously. Continuing where I left off in the previous video, I started with the rear axle. Here I'm installing the torque arm mount. After verifying that there will be enough room for the torque arm, I moved on to test fitting the motor mount. This new motor mount, which incorporates a mount for the torque arm, isn't going to fit due to the chassis transmission cross member being in the way. I started by removing material with a rotary tool and file to see if I could get enough clearance. It pretty quickly became apparent that this cross member is going to need to be removed to allow enough space for the torque arm mount. So I cut it out using some side cutters and then began trimming and sanding the remaining sections until it was smooth so I would have a nice place to mount a new cross member that sits lower. At this point, I went ahead and assembled the motor mount and gear assembly. As I mentioned before after driving the car, the heat from the motor caused the previous motor mount to bend slightly. Although I'm using the same motor mount design, made in the same material as before, I'm placing some spacers in between the motor and the mount. I'm not sure if this is going to be enough to prevent the heat from affecting the motor mount, but I'm curious to see if this will work. Other than the spacers, this motor mount goes together the exact same way as before. I wanted to test fit the new motor mount assembly so I can figure out how low I need to make the new cross member. After taking some measurements, I cut out a piece of styrene to the correct size and shape. After a little bit of sanding around the edges, I glued the piece in place. While it was drying, I mounted the body to the chassis in preparation for mounting the axle. With the body in place, it'll be easier to determine where the axle needs to be placed so that the wheels are in the center of the wheel wells. After making sure that the axle is centered and aligned, I mark its position. I then applied some glue to the trailing arm mounts and secure them to the chassis piece. I next install the panhard bar mount making sure that it is at the correct angle. After that, I installed the front K-member assembly. 
At this point, I was getting ready to repaint the chassis piece. To make the undercarriage look a bit more realistic, I decided to remove the raised lettering visible on the back. This was very easy to do just by scraping the surface with a knife and then using some sandpaper to smooth it out. I also wanted to do the necessary sanding and cutting to the new cross member so that the motor mount assembly will fit. Because the plastic was getting thin, I glued a second piece below the spot where I was removing material. After a bit of sanding and cutting, I was able to get everything to fit. I also sanded some of the edges smooth on the new cross member to give it a little better appearance. With everything else sanded, I used some compressed air and a cloth to wipe away any dust before I start painting. I began brushing on some Model Masters acrylic flat black paint. I wasn't concerned about brush strokes being visible or the difference between the two colors since this is the underside of the car. As it turned out though, this color almost perfectly matched what had already been painted. After allowing the paint to dry, I started working on the panhard bar. I started by gluing one end of the rod and loosely mounting it in place and then marking where I wanted to cut it. After grinding it down to the exact length, I tested it one last time and then glued the other end and mounted the panhard bar. Although it is still at a tad bit of an angle, it's much better than before and will function well. I trimmed the springs a little bit since the ride height before was a little bit too high. I made sure not to remove too much though since I don't want to set the exact ride height until I have the interior and everything else installed. I printed out a bunch of new parts that although look very similar to the previous ones, they incorporate a lot of minor tweaks and changes, especially the steering components. After doing a bit of sanding, I painted some of the components, such as the brake rotors. As I mentioned before, I'm doing something a little bit different with the upper strut mount. In the last video, I made some modifications to the body that allow for this new upper strut mount design to be mounted. I did my best to design this part so that it would match the size and shape of the surface that it is being mounted to. I also wanted to incorporate a strut bar that will help with the alignment and provide a bit of reinforcement. I started by using a sphere to represent the top of the strut and worked my design around that. 
After getting these parts printed, I installed the struts and test fitted them to the car. They fit great, though just barely touched the top of the hood, so I did a little bit of sanding so that they would sit slightly lower. The left side strut mount needed to be sanded a bit so that it would fit around the brake master cylinder that's molded into the body. I did a bit more sanding to the body so that the mounts would sit flat. I next worked on the strut bar. I secured one end of the rod to the strut mount and marked the position of where I needed to cut the rod on the other end. After the rod was the correct length, I glued each end. I then glued each upper strut mount to the body. After the paint had dried on the front wheel mounts, I glued the magnets in place. I then assembled the front knuckles and steering linkage. Next, I cut the new strut rods to the correct length and glued them to the knuckle. As of making this video, I'm in the process of making some design improvements to these knuckles, since getting the strut rod aligned properly on these is a bit difficult. With the knuckles mounted to the lower control arms, I moved on to mounting the steering arms. Before mounting the servo arm to the servo, I made sure that the servo was centered. I noticed that the motor was very close to a couple of edges on the chassis, so I did a little bit of trimming to increase the clearance. Mm -hmm. 
After that, I started working on the torque arm. First, making sure that the metal rod was cut to the correct length, and then I glued the end piece. I then mounted that end to the motor mount assembly. I noticed that the nut was coming in contact with the chassis, so I needed to remove a bit of material in order to make enough room for it. After doing so, I used a little bit more of that flat black paint to paint over the white areas before securing the motor mount. While I had the paint out, I also painted the drive shaft. Finally, I installed the motor mount and drive shaft and did a quick test to make sure everything is working properly. With everything functioning as it should, I mounted the body to the chassis. The Firebird is coming together great, and I can't wait to see how it performs with these new parts. There's still a few minor things I need to do before I can drive the car, but it's getting very close to being ready. For those who are interested in doing a similar build, I'm getting close to being ready to start selling some of the components that are specific to this model kit. There's still a bit more testing I want to do first, and as I mentioned before, I'm currently working on an improved steering knuckle design, but so far so good. So while I was waiting for some of the parts on the Firebird to be printed, I did a little bit of work on a roof rack that I designed and printed a while back, which I'll be using on the K10 Pre-Runner build. Both the roof rack and the resin coating I applied to it are a bit rough, but it's nothing a little bit of sanding and filing can't take care of. Plus, I'm not worried about trying to make this roof rack look perfect. I started by filing away any of the larger imperfections, especially those that are visible from the top, which will be the most visible. I then used some sandpaper to reach the tighter areas and to help give the overall surface a smoother finish and prep it for primer. I also made sure all of the lights would fit onto the front. After I finished sanding, I wiped away all of the dust and began layering on some primer, which will help to smooth the surface. With the primer applied, I did a little bit of light sanding in a few areas and then applied several thick layers of paint. In between coats, I worked on the lights, cutting and sanding until the surface was smooth. For the lenses, I used thin pieces of clear plastic, which I cut to around 11 millimeters in diameter. I used some silver paint for the inside of the light buckets and some black paint for the outside. Once the paint was dried, I glued the outer ring to the light bucket, sandwiching the clear lens in between. <laughs> 
Finally, I mounted each of the lights to the roof rack using M1.6 by 5mm screws. This roof rack turned out great and is going to make an awesome addition to the pre-runner build. I will be adding this roof rack to the Make It RC Thingiverse page, either by the time this video is uploaded or shortly after. It's definitely not the easiest thing to print, but the results look pretty sick, especially once I get some LEDs installed. Before concluding this video, I want to give a huge thank you to everybody who has been purchasing products from the Make It RC store. Currently, everything is back in stock, including the t-shirts. The support is greatly appreciated. And as always, I want to end today's video by showing some of the amazing vehicles and projects that have been showcased in the Make It RC Facebook group. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.